Good afternoon and good evening. Welcome our past, loyal and our future guests, as well as our dedicated travel advisors. We are so glad you could join us today for our Valentine's virtual sip and sail cocktail hour. France has so much to offer, and it's not just the romance of Paris. Obviously, we know Paris is one of the most fascinating and beautiful cities on earth. But it is about the landscapes, the stunning ones, history everywhere, the architecture from across all ages, the mouse-watering food, the exquisite wine, the beautiful beaches, all the UNESCO World Heritage Site, and France is an endless source of inspiration for creatives. But before we get into everything, it is my pleasure to introduce our speakers to you today. And we have Mariana, uh, one of our wonderful cruise managers, Mariana Ramalo, joining us from Buenos Aires today. Hello, Mariana. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And we have Sebastian Leroy, who um, worked for us as one of our course managers for so many years and is now in Naples in Florida and one of our wonderful business development managers. So Sebastian, hello and good evening to you in Florida. Good evening, Christine. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining. And of course, we have our team of moderators who are there for you to answer all the questions that you will have. We will try to answer as many questions as possible live at the end of our webinar, but we do not want to run over with time. So please, we have a chat box. You can really send us all the questions and our moderators will send the answers to you ASAP. Now, um, for us, it's so important that we add a touch of amour to your day today. But we are sharing all the intimate details of our newest itineraries in France. From the romance of Paris, of course, I mentioned the City of Lights, to the idyllic Chateau of Bordeaux, to evening illumination courses in Provence. So I'm sure you will fall in love with France today. Um, our itineraries will take us to Normandy, Brittany, Burgundy, the Provence, and the Bordeaux regions. All such beautiful regions in France, and yet so different. And with itineraries including up to 23 excursions each week, and they are all included, plus our not to be missed optional land packages, we will discover what all these unique areas have to offer. So I know Janet, Mariana, Sebastian will all share um, their insider tips to help you create a perfect future journey together with us on the rivers of France. But I also know we have a special surprise here. Janet. <laughs> Hi, so nice to be here. Um, I am here today to debut something very special to all of you who have joined us from around the world through Facebook, YouTube, or our GoToMeeting platform. We all know that these have been challenging times and sharing love now is more important than ever. As we celebrate, February, the month of love, we thought it would be a perfect time to debut our newest video. But before we play it, we wanted to take a moment and thank you, Christine. You have been so amazing and committed in sharing your time with us, your positivity and your deep compassion from every, for everyone around the world. 
And you are in contact with all of us every day, including our guests, like we are here today, our team members, crew, and the hardworking travel advisors who make our guest travel dreams come true. So thank you for inspiring us every day and allowing us to use your voice to tell our love story. We raise a glass to you and please enjoy this video. Anka, please play the video. Thank you so much. <laughs> Step aboard a world of exceptional experiences where your journey is our passion. Allow us to share villages that time forgot. Walk along cobblestone streets filled with the lights. Paddle through historic town squares and revel in moments that last a lifetime. When you step aboard Ama Waterways, each day brings a genuine smile that warms the heart. Every river a new culture that inspires, and each course a moment to savor and share. Experience these wonders and delights with Ama Waterways, the heart of the river. Well, we hope that you felt the love that was put into the making of this video, and we now hope that you can help us share this love with your family and friends. Let us use the positive power of social media and spread the heart of the river to inspire your friends and family to plan for future travels and make new cherished memories together. So please help us by sharing this video to the world that we've just released today during the Sip and Sail Hour using the hashtag Alma Waterways, and this will help us measure how far your love has spread. Thank you and cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you so, so much, Janet. I know you're always so good for such wonderful surprises. And um, even after 18 years uh, since we founded Ama Waterways, I'm still stunned and surprised every day, you know, how much love we are all sharing with each other. It's such a wonderful, wonderful family we have with Ama Waterways. And of course, together with you, our travel advisors and all our guests. So I think it is time now that we raise our class for our very, very first toast, our welcome toast. So um, please raise it with me. And first, Mariana, what is actually in your glass today? I have a glass of Bordeaux wine from Chateau de la Riviere, which I bought it on my last cruise in Bordeaux. And by the way, the case is getting empty. I need to go back. And get more. <laughs> <laughs> it is time to go back, right? Well, that sounds delicious, Mariana. And Sebastian, please share with us what you drink today. I am drinking a Pinot Noir from the Côte, uh, from the Côte de Nuit, so very close to uh, Bone, where we will be taking you in a few minutes. And for me, that's the contrary. Actually, I need to go there to get the wine on site. <laughs> very, very nice. And I actually, originally, I wanted to have um, my favorite one, the Pomerol from Bordeaux in my glass, but it's so much earlier in California right now. So I thought mm, it's a little bit too heavy my time. I save it for later. And I went with uh, Beaujolais um, from the region, of course, when we are cruising the Rhone River um, in the Lyon area. So with this, um, let's raise the glass. And in honor of the upcoming holiday, Valentine's Day, I have modified some language by one of my favorite poets, Maya Angelou, and turned it into a toast. To love that recognizes no barriers, that jumps hurdles, leaps fences, and penetrates walls to arrive at its destination full of hope and to the love of the rivers 
that we share. Cheers. Cheers. And now I would like to ask our audience to submit your Valentine's messages. And we would love to pick the very, very, uh, the most creative, I want to say, and we will announce the winner at the end of our sip and seal hour tonight. And of course, we'll spend a small Valentine's surprise to the, the winner as well. And with this, it's time now, Sebastian, that um, you will take it over from here. So thanks again for joining us. Sure. Well, thank you for having me. And let's let's start. I mean, it's it's a great start. We just had a little drink, so uh, we see that we have the sip and seal cocktail hour. So, what is sip and seal? For those of you who join us for the first time, it is actually um, a cocktail hour that we have every day during the cruise, one hour before we serve dinner. And during that hour, uh, you will be able to enjoy a complimentary cocktail or glass of wine or uh, soft drinks, if you want. I mean, we also have non-alcoholics. But the, the great thing uh, about the sip and sell is that it's really the the moment where where everybody gathers. You know, before dinner, um, and we see that with groups of friends, with families, and that's what the moment where everybody really talks about what they've seen during the day. Because you have many different excursions, many different places that you can see during the day, and you see everybody gathering there. They're having a little glass. They had. I mean, they, they could relax a little bit. And they're enjoying and talking about what they've seen that day. And it's, it is extremely, extremely successful. That's a great moment every day. Now, I think uh, that having talked uh, about the sip and sail, it is time to welcome all our guests on board. And I think it's time to begin our sailing, our virtual sailing through France. So Mariana, why don't you open this conversation? Thank you, Sebastian, and thank you very much for having me tonight. It's an honor. I'm so excited. I will start talking to you a little bit about northern uh, France, about the region of Normandy. You know that in Normandy we had the Normans or the Northmen, which were the descendants of the Scandinavians, which were pirates and traders called Vikings who ruled the region until the midpoint of the 13th century. Some of the most well-known Normans were William the Conqueror, for example, who invaded England in 1066, and several kings of England were of Norman blood, like Henry I, Henry II, or Richard the Lionheart. Here we have two itineraries, Paris and Normandy, from Paris back to Paris, and our new itinerary, which is the impressions of the Seine and Paris. In these itineraries, among other things, uh, you will learn about recent history, let's say about the Allied invasion of Normandy, the D-Day in 1944. And on a more colorful note, you will learn about the Valley of the Impressionists, for example. You know that Normandy is the birthplace of two art movements, the Gothic architecture with the famous cathedral builders and Impressionists like Claude Monet. Not only him, but we have many avant-garde painters of 1870s until 1880s that came to Normandy because it was such a beautiful place to paint the landscapes, the changing lights, concentrating along the Seine and also on the Norman coast. I have to tell you that this itinerary is a dream for photographers. And this region has a very green landscape, weather like can be compared to the one of England. Therefore, we have excellent, excellent dairy products, excellent milk, excellent cheese. The best cheese of the country can be found in Normandy. You know that in France, uh, you have the largest consumers of cheese in the world. It's really amazing. You have around 12 hundred different varieties of cheese and France makes nearly one million tons of cheese a year. So here we find, talking about gastronomy, very rich meals full of butter, full of cream. And now I would like you to, Sebastian, please continue and take us a little bit deeper on the most important excursions that we have at Ama Waterways. Sure, sure, but you, you forgot you forgot one famous Norman, me. I mean, I'm from there as well. Right? <laughs> um, 
So, yeah, we, of course, everything what Mariana just said is is absolutely true. And I think the variety that's something that is that is some that's something that people will really love about not only Normandy. I mean, of course, it is great there, and I, I couldn't. I mean, as a native of Normandy, I could not say the contrary. Uh, but in all these itineraries in France, you will see that there are interests for everyone. I mean, of course, you cannot go to Normandy without talking about uh, the uh, landing beaches uh, of uh, World War II, of the Neptune operation, of the Overlord operation. And we spend an entire day uh, there taking our guests in small groups at different paces, uh, because that's also very important to make sure that everybody enjoys this day uh, at their own pace, that they can see what they want to see at their own pace. We will go to the Colville Cemetery, which is uh, the most important cemetery in the area and very close to Omaha Beach. And we have also different tours because um, I really hope that tonight we also have some of our Canadian guests who are looking, I mean, who are watching. Maybe it's a little bit later, but maybe also some of our, of our British guests might be watching as well. And um, I mean, we have different sectors, you know, that these, these uh, beaches were separated in sectors. So we have made these excursions for you so that you can go where your interest really is. We have the US sectors, we have Canadian and British sectors. So that's an, that's an impressive, I mean, a very um, emotional day for everybody. That's what I've heard all the time since we've started. Uh, and it, it is it is really something that uh, you don't forget. I've had the chance to have with me on cruises World War II veterans who had landed on the beach. I mean, actually, one of them on Omaha Beach and another one in St. Mary Eglise. So he was a, a, in the parachutes. He was arriving in the second wave. And being able to talk with these folks uh, is, is something that you, that you don't forget. I mean, I actually even brought them to the stage to share things with, with our guests. But if we look at the next, um, at the next slide, Anka, please, uh, we have, as Mariana just mentioned, the Impressionist movement, the Modernist movement. I mean, we had a lot of painters, uh, Cezanne, Boudin, Monet, Renoir, Van Gogh, uh, you name them, Camille Pissarro as well. And they came to this, to this region because, as Mariana just said, you have a lot of different lights. Where we have our colleagues here, our Captain Joffre and Wade and Leo, they're on uh, actually the bridge of uh, the Japanese garden. So that's in Claude Monet's garden in Giverny. And this is something that you want to see as well. Whether you are an artist or not, and because you know artists, I don't consider myself an artist per se, but when you're there, you understand what you've seen. You understand a little bit more what Claude Monet was doing. He painted the water lilies. He painted 250 of them. I mean, one of them, I mean, one of the biggest one is in the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art. Uh, uh, it's, it's a 12 meter, so we're talking about a 35 feet long painting on six feet tall. He painted them all the time. You can find them in the Orangerie Museum uh, in Paris, in Marmottan, in many places. And you could really see, depending on the season, the temperature, uh, the light, that there were a lot of changes. And this is really a beautiful experience. You spend an entire afternoon there in his house and you really get to learn because we have absolutely amazing guides. The guides also make the tours. This, I must tell you. Uh, and uh, they know, they love to transmit that. It is a beautiful tour. But as I mentioned, I mentioned the Impressionism. There was also a, per a person of importance who many people know in the Netherlands, but actually he's buried just outside Paris, uh, 30 kilometers outside Paris with his brother Thiel, and that's Vincent van Gogh, or van Gogh, as we pronounce it in English. Uh, but uh, Vincent uh, spent actually his, a bit more than two months uh, at the end of his life, the 70 last days of his life. He was in, uh, in an inn called L'Auberge Ravoux, uh, which we will take you and you will visit and you will see where Vincent was actually the most productive. That's when he was really at the top of his art. And he painted in the 70 days, 70 paintings. He sold one to his brother, Theo. These are these little details that will make things absolutely amazing for you every day on these itineraries. And of course, we have also uh, at Ama Waterways, for those of you who are familiar uh, you will know that we have the land packages. For those of you who join us for the first time, that's a very important part. And uh, these land packages are very important. Uh, it, I consider it part of the cruise. Why? Because your cruise manager will be there as well. The cruise manager will be with you from the moment you arrive uh, until the moment you really leave at the end of the post land extension. And this one in Paris, like all others, allows what? 
Uh, it allows you to beat the jet lag. It allows you to really start enjoying where you are. You're in another country. You get to know your future fellow travelers on the ship and you have the time to enjoy the areas that you will see. That's, I think, something that is very important on river cruises. You will have the time and you will be able to enjoy really all the places that you have. We will take you to very exquisite accommodation because the experience you will have on the ship should also be reflected on at the hotel. We will take you to the Maison Astor. That's this hotel that you see here. Uh, it's, uh, it used to be um, uh, what we call a hotel particulier. So it was a hotel, but for one family. It was built in, in the, at the very beginning of the, the 20th century by a very rich American person, actually, John Jacob Astor. Um, and just one little anecdote about him. He passed away when the Titanic went down because he was on the Titanic. But that's just an, a, a completely different story. Uh, but you will stay there. The Maison Astor is located just between the Eiffel Tower and the Opera. So really in the heart of the city. And if we look at the next uh, slide, you will see this beautiful landmark, which you will see, of course, when you will be there. L'Opera Garnier here on, on the right, and really a, a masterpiece of architecture and also of sound. If you have the chance one day to go to an opera in there, please take the chance. Go there and do it. It is absolutely amazing. Now, uh, we have also uh, a very special way to show you Paris once you're on land. And we will take you to L'Atelier des Lumières. L'Atelier des Lumières means the lights workshop. This is a movement and this, uh, the, the, these workshops have been launched a few years ago. Uh, and it started in a quarry actually in Provence. Uh, and now they have this beautiful place in the heart of Paris as well, where you have projections of paintings. And this is also with music. And you really walk uh, at the heart of the, uh, of, of the paintings, how the painters were thinking. And when you look at the size of the people, you can see their, um, th their shadows there. It is really gigantic and you're really immersed in all that. So I think when we are talking about uh, these itineraries, this impression of the Seine in Paris is our new one. And Mariana mentioned the, the, the regular one or the more established one, I may say. Uh, that was going from Paris and back to Paris. Impressions of the Seine in Paris is starting in Paris and it's going, it going all the way to Le Havre, uh, or it can start from Le Havre and go all the way back to Paris, depending on the direction. But the idea is to have a pre-extension, one night in Paris, and then after the cruise, you will have the possibility to discover Norman, the heart of Normandy and Brittany as well. Bayeux, is very famous. It's a beautiful village, very close actually to the Normandy landing beaches, but it's very famous for a tapestry, a tapestry called the Tapestry of the Queen Mathilde. And we just heard Mariana talking about the conquest of England by uh, William the Conqueror. And actually the Tapestry of the Queen Mathilde or the Tapestry of Bayeux uh, actually depicts all these battles from 1064 to 1066. Amazing uh, to see. But it's not only about history, it's also about uh, beautiful villages, about these half timbered houses that you can find in Normandy, most of them having a farm behind. And what do they make in these farms? Cheeses, as Mariana just said. And frankly, she was totally right. Huh? Butter and uh, cheese, that's uh, being from there, my mom said, you cannot stand if you did not eat enough cheese. And uh, well, I guess she was right. I'm still standing, so that's a good thing. Uh, you will not find, for those of you who are scared about the, the fat content, you will not find any cheese with less than 45% of fat in there. So, the Beckel wine is absolutely wonderful. And then we will also take you to masterpieces uh, of gardening. Because, uh, as I told you, there is really a diversity of things to see. In, and as Mariana mentioned, you see these green, these vibrant colors, they're everywhere. Um, and we will take you to Akini. Uh, you will see the Chateau d'Anne, and there are many of them that we will see there. But Akini is wonderful because instead of visiting the chateau, you will visit the gardens. And the master gardener will take you through the gardens and explain to you the history of the French, what, what you call the French gardens. But so uh, I think it is, it is time to talk a little bit about the land package, Mariana. And why don't you take over going in Brittany now? And be yes. before Marianne is mentioning Saint Malo, I just wanted to chime in to say this is the perfect itinerary now to slow down. We are always talking about what's coming after when we are all able to travel. What do our clients want to see? 
everyone wants to see nature, uh, wants to be in the cities, wants to go on, you know, in, into villages or into cities that are not as crowded as all the main destinations. You want local experiences, right? And that's exactly what we are doing with this itinerary. And now, Mariana, talk to us about Saint Malo because that is also such a beautiful medieval city, one of my favorite ones. And I celebrated actually a very special birthday there a few years ago. Thank you, Christine. So I will talk a little bit about the land extension at San Manolo, located in Brittany, this region could be considered the strange Celtic uncle of France, we could say. The native people from Brittany are technically related to the Celts, like Welsh, like Irish, like Scottish are. So they do have their own language called the Breton. You can see it on their street signs. They are very proud, very proud of their heritage. Schools are trying to revive the old language because not everybody nowadays speaks it. Also crepes were invented here, also salted caramel. People love to drink apple cider. It is one of the most distinct regions of France. So this land package can be done as a pre or post extension like Sebastian was explaining, depending on the sailing direction. So it's three nights in Saint Malo, Brittany and one night in Paris by the airport. Saint Malo, as you can see in the picture, is a historic port town between the Atlantic Ocean and the English Tunnel. It's called the Emerald Coast. Our hotel, and this is very important to mention, is inside of the city walls. On our next slide, we're going to see an amazing place, and it's going to be one of the best excursions of this land extension. It's Mont Saint Michel. If if I were to make a list of the top 10 places to visit in France, Mont Saint Michel would definitely be on it. It is one of those places that you have to see it with your own eyes in order to truly appreciate how unique, how fantastic this place is. It's like a fairy tale place, it's World Heritage Site, and it's surrounded, as you can see in the picture, by tidal waters. It's in to keep in mind as well that upon visiting Mount Saint Michel, it's also home to 44 inhabitants, including the monks and the nuns that reside in the abbey. So you may be even lucky enough to hear the beautiful sound of their choir upon entering the abbey, who knows. So Saint Malo, it's, uh, this land package is complimentary on select 2021 and 2022 sailings. Now let's move to another region, please. We have so much to talk about. France is such and a I know, project. I know our guests oh. love house on France as well and look at the lavender. So it's, yeah. So now we're going to talk about southern France, about Provence. This region is crowned by Lyon, the capital of the French gastronomy, due to its location, I would say because the landscape offers all kinds of resources. It has lakes, it has rivers, it has mountains, it has the fruits of the Drôme and the Ardèche, it has the vegetables of Chardonnay, it has the fish of Savoie, quality wines like Beaujolais, like you are drinking, Christine, or the Côte du Rhône, many things. Lots of very well-known chefs as well, like Paul Bocuse, uh, related to the Nouvelle Cuisine, lived and worked here. And the gastronomy of this region is my favorite. I'm sorry, Sebastian, I know that you come from Normandy, but here we change the butter and the cream for olive oil, tomatoes, truffles, Mediterranean diet, one of the healthiest. So here we have the mighty Rhone, warmer climate, lavender fields, Hills are not very far away from the Alps. No more Vikings like we find in the north of France. Here we have a Roman heritage. It's the land of the golden stone villages. And our new itinerary, the essence of Burgundy and Provence, we will taste when we are there, great Chardonnay, Aligoté, which is a very nice wine to discover, and Pinot Noir. I'm sure Seb is going to tell us more because he's our 
wine expert. As well, we have Dijon mustard, which comes from this region. And you know what? Also, snails, escargots, are grown here as well. French eats approximately 700 million snails every year. Something to think about, huh? Mm. So here we can find rolling countryside, the Song River, less traffic than any other river of Europe. We have important monasteries, churches, palaces, great vineyards, unique architecture, and we dock in the heart of the village, giving you the opportunity to explore them on your own. So please, Seth, if you would like to continue. Well, before yeah. Sebastian, I, I need to say something again. Oh. You know, those are such great promoters of Normandy, <laughs> Brittany, so the Seine River, and of course, the Rhone. And I love them both. So I can only say once we all can travel again, it will be good to combine both rivers and spend 14 nights in France. And it's very easy because from Paris, you can go everywhere by TGV even faster. So Sebastian. No, and, you, and you're absolutely right. That's why actually all our ships are departing on the same day. So that yeah. in order to make sure that we can combine that. I mean, every Thursday we have the departures. I mean, and of course, I, I don't want to say that you will be biased, Christine, but since we've moved the Ama Christina on the Rhone, of course, you will want to go uh, in this area of the world. But the truth is that there is, the, all these areas are absolutely amazing. I mean, the color of Provence, uh, which is which is uh, really the, the the main tour that we have on the Rhone River. Uh, you will you will really learn. What I like about this region is that you change the landscape every day, and you change also uh, the part of history every day. And pretty much like in Normandy, where you just mentioned, we have the time, and uh, because that's why we have moved actually, and uh, we have changed this itinerary to make sure that everybody can also enjoy daytime cruising, because that's also very important. That's why uh, basically we do half the day touring. Um, and, then, and then after that, we also have the afternoon or the morning, depending on the river, where you will be able to cruise and enjoy daytime cruising. But no matter where we are, on the Seine or on the Rhone, uh, it goes between four and six overnights. Because we also want the guests to be able to enjoy the cities at night. Because all these areas that you see during the day can be Lyon, it can be, uh, it can be Avignon that we will see in a few minutes, or, or on the Seine. They have two completely different faces during the day and during the night. But look at that. Uh, we, you just said that we're taking you where in, in, in basically places where others don't go. So we will take you, and we did not talk about the truffles, but uh, we will take you truffle hunting. And that's always the hit, because you know that uh, the truffle uh, hunters are, uh, that's, that's a kind of a secret society. You know, they don't talk too much about what they do, how they find it, but they have the dogs. And they are dogs. I mean, they are more precious than gold. Nobody can touch these dogs, that's for sure. And we will take you, they go in the fields, the dogs show you how he finds, because, you know, in the past, they used to that with pigs. The, the pigs are very good at finding the truffles as well. The problem with the pig is that the pig eats the truffle. The dog doesn't. So it's much more efficient and to have it with the dog. Uh, so, and you will taste that. So you will taste, and uh, you can see these little uh, tap anatomy or, or little very thin uh, sliced truffles. You will taste it. And it's always an experience that, that people love because you don't have that here. I mean, this is not something that you will see every day. Um, if we continue, uh, if we go to, to our next slide, uh, you will see that we have the, uh, the essence of Burgundy and Provence. So there, what we have done, because we listen to our guests, and, and, to, and, and that's why it's always so great to have the feedback uh, uh, from, from our guests, because they say, well, the Rhone is great, but we've heard so great things about Burgundy. So why don't you go to Burgundy? And now what do we do? Well, we're going to Burgundy. And there you will go uh, from chalon sur saone uh, which is a, an amazing little city who most of you probably never heard of. But uh, I was talking with Mariana the other day. Uh, let's say that we have photographers on board the ship. chalon sur saone is the town where photography was invented in the world. And our ship is docked like 70 yards from the museum, which is uh, the, the house of Nice Fournier, who was the inventor. And you can go in there. And the first picture he took was a portrait of his wife. It took eight hours to make the picture. So, I mean, these are really all these different little things that you can learn there. And then we go all the way down. Huh? So we will go from the Burgundy and with, on the Saône, very quiet river, to, uh, the, uh, to, to the Rhone River. And when we have 
Arles, uh, which is a 2,600 years old town at the bottom, uh, really in the south of France, and you see these Roman artifacts, and then you will continue going north to Avignon, which is, I believe, on the next slide. Avignon, you will not be talking about uh, the Phoenician times there. No, you will be talking about a very troubled period of time, which is the period where you had the rebel popes, so popes who did not actually agree with Rome. Uh, that's the, 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 the period we had the Contavenesa, and you see this very famous bridge here, the saint Benezet Bridge. Uh, I'm sure everybody has heard the Sur le Pont d'Avignon song, which I will uh, spare you tonight because you want to have a nice evening. Uh, but uh, you, the, the bridge was actually broken because the king of France, who was on the other river, did not want to repair it because he didn't want to hear about these folks. And you see the palace that you see behind the palace of the popes look much more like a fortress than a papal palace. Uh, after that, of course, we continue to the north. Uh, and there we are still on the Rhone. But if you look at this, I love this picture. It's absolutely beautiful. It's taken from Fourvière. And you see the two rivers. And you have one uh, just at the bottom, which is the Saône River. And then if you look a little bit further back, you see the Rhone River there. And that's Lyon. The, of course, capital city and, uh, of, of the culinary art uh, in France. Uh, that's where we will stay. That's where we, we will offer you also a variety of tours. We, we will let you uh, discover Lyon in many different ways. We can take a city tour that will take you to different areas of Lyon, including this hill of Fourvière, uh, in order to have uh, really an understanding of the size of this city. because. There are so many things. I mean, I could tell you about basically the start of the banking history. Uh, it starts here. And the, the, the beginning of the Swiss banking history starts in Lyon when the Jewish populations were actually pushed away from the city. So you will learn a lot about it. If you don't want to do this, no problem. If you're active, you want to be biking, look at that. We will let you discover the Lyon, the Lyon and the vicinity by bike. You will have a guided tour uh, that will really take you for two and a half hours with multiple guides because we want to make sure that we always and that we never forget anyone so we have multiple guides with you and you will be able to enjoy this town uh, in, in a different way you will we will not take you all the way up to Fourvier though uh, and if you're still interested by doing something else because we are after all in the culinary capital of France well why not taking a culinary tour and then we will take you to the, the Léal Bocuse, actually Mariana was talking about Paul Bocuse, and the market hall, uh, is, it is an experience for itself. You want to go there, we will do different stations with different tastings, you see the sausages, uh, Lyon, Lyon has so much to offer in terms of food, uh, different varieties of food, and not only salty, sweet, is also absolutely amazing what you will find there. So you have really these choices uh, of tours, and actually, it's always good, I don't know what you think, Christine and Mariana, but I think it's always good to ask our guests what would they like to do if they were to go to Lyon. So that's why we've prepared for you a little, uh, a, a little question, let's say. If you had the choice between a visit of the capital city, a bike tour uh, of the capital city, of uh, the culinary city, sorry, uh, a bike tour in Lyon or a tasting tour in Lyon, which one would you choose? And so in order to answer that, you can answer in the little chat. Huh? So you just write your comment and tell us what you would like to do. And then we will, we, this way we will, we will know which one, I mean, we do them all anyway, but we will know who wants to go where. And this is always the hardest, I have to say, because they are all fantastic tours, but that's also a reason to come back at a different time of the year, because spring is so different from summer and fall where the vineyards are all in their golden, orange, red, yellow colors, and the climate is so beautiful and mild. So any time of the year, something new to experience and those different tours. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and that's, uh, you, see that, you see that as well on the Saône River. I mean, we, we have the Cluny Abbey, and, and this, is, this is a place, um, Words can't really describe Cluny. You, once again, it's like the Mont Saint-Michel. You need to go there uh, because Cluny ha has been, th this is an abbey that was, until St. Peter of Rome was built, this was the largest abbey in the world. Uh, unfortunately, a large part of it was destroyed at the French Revolution, but what is still standing there is, it's mind-blowing. I mean, when, when you look 
at, at the pillars and you're walking in the middle of this and you just imagine the size of this site. And it was really the, the library of Cluny. I mean, it was really a center for the Benedictine monks. Uh, and this, this is really the, the, the stability of the church in the 12th and 13th century starts right there at this, at this very place. Uh, it, is, it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, and Burgundy, of course, has the church. Uh, and, and the church was present throughout the history. And if we go to the next slide, we will see the Hospice de Bonne. And the Hospice de Bonne is most probably the most beautiful hospital that you will see. Oh, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's the most beautiful hospital in the world. This one is from the 15th century. Uh, and so it's very, very uh, specific with its tiled roof. Huh? Uh, but these Hospice de Bonne uh, nowadays are still, I mean, they are not active like they were in the 15th century, but they're active with wine auctions. They do wine auctions there. That's one of them. That's probably the most famous in France and one of the most famous in the world. And that's why actually, that's why I love this, this little one here because it comes from three miles away from Bone. It is a beautiful wine. I mean, it's very relative, you know? I mean, wine is a matter of taste, uh, and, uh, but this one is amazing. And this itinerary, uh, this, this essence and Burgundy and Provence will take you through many wine regions. And because if we, if we start from the bottom where we were, you could try, you could start in Al with uh, the rosés from Provence. Then you go a little bit north of Avignon, you would go to Chateauneuf du Pape. I mean, these are the wines that you have in this area. You continue on the other side, just on the other side of Chateauneuf du Pape, you have Tavel, which are very spe special rosé wines as well. And you continue all the way to the Cote Roti. Uh, and then after that, the Beaujolais area, then you go to the, to the, to the uh, Burgundy as, uh, as such. And one thing, even if the Beaujolais is technically part of Burgundy, never, ever, ladies and gentlemen, tell a Burgundy winemaker that Beaujolais is part of their region and vice versa. They would not be very happy with that. For them, these are two different regions. Uh, that's why the Beaujolais is the Gamay, the home of the Gamay, and the Pinot Noir, is the Burgundy wine. Take us on the land tour, Mariana. Thank you again, Seb. So I will tell you about the land extensions in the essence of Burgundy and Provence itinerary, which is our new program. So in Geneva, we have three nights in Switzerland. We start by having a morning walking tour of Geneva, very nice, very quiet, the city, the gateway to the Swiss Alps. So our local guides will tell you everything they know about their tradition in watch making, chocolate making and chocolate eating as well. The next day we go to the south, to the pearl of the French Alps, Annecy, which is the picture that you have on the right, also known as the little Venice of France, home to beautiful houses, castles, green spaces, bike trails along the lake. It's really wonderful. And later in the day, you will visit the Castle Chillon, which is a picture perfect medieval island fortress. It began as a Roman outpost and ended as a prison. In this land extension, you will also make a stop at Dijon. Dijon, you know, for the mustard of Dijon. And also, you know what you have over there, the creme de cassis, which is that black, wonderful black currant liqueur, where we make a drink there called Kir. The mayor used to be called Felix Kir, so in his honor, they decided to make this drink, which is white wine, a ligoté from the region, and this black currant liqueur. So that's also very good to have in Valentine's Day. On this next slide, we have beautiful Barcelona. Barcelona, let me tell you, this land package is complimentary on select uh, 2021 and 2022 sailings on essence of a Provence and Burgundy cruise. So we will have three nights in Barcelona, the vibrant, the colorful city of tapas, of Gaudí, of Catalan language, which is completely different to the Spanish language. This is the place where outdoors is the place to be. You have excellent seafood, excellent paella, markets like the Boqueria market, where you can just go for a stroll or you can sit down, have a drink, have something to eat. It's really, really cozy. Amazing architecture, like the one we see in this slide, we are looking at Park Well, designed by Antoni Gaudí. Also, you have his ongoing 
project, which we never know when it's going to end, the Sagrada Familia Basilica in the heart of the city of Barcelona. So the day after the arrival at the city of Barcelona, during the morning, you will have the best of Barcelona city tour, partly by bus, partly walking, different places, like you explained, Sebastian, small groups. You will be taken to the whole Barcelona to discover hidden corners, treasures of the city. The following day, we take you to the mountain of Montserrat, which is home to the Benedictine Monastery of Santa Maria de Montserrat. It's located approximately 30 miles away from Barcelona. Once there, you will take a scenic ride, it's a funicular, up to the top of the hill, and you will visit the interior of the monastery and see the Black Madonna sculpture. And like Christine said at the very beginning, all this, all this program, all these tours are included in the price. You don't need to pay anything else. And now, Christine, I think you have very good news. Absolutely. And Mariana and Sebastian, I love your passion. And dear guests, that's why um, we also have our course managers always escorting our pre and post land programs in addition to the cruise. So you are in one hand with your family from the beginning to the end and look at the wealth of knowledge they have and the stories behind and how much fun it is to really explore all of this together. And because you were asking for, I would love to let you know that starting in 2023, we have also cre created a new land package to Nice and Monaco. So this is truly based on your feedback. And um, we are opening, as you can see, our 2023 season early. Portugal, the Douro River is already open and you can start booking our French programs for 23 next week. But of course, right now, I really still hope you will travel with us whenever we can start traveling again in 2021 this year or also next year 2022 because i truly believe um you you want to do so much still in all the next years um and we should not wait we don't know what else the future can bring to us so right now we are living from the magical moments and memories that we all shared in our past and we want to get back as soon as possible making more memories so now there is another intriguing part of France, and this is, of course, the Western part, beautiful Bordeaux. Mariana, I know this is also your very special area. So tell us a little bit more about Bordeaux. I love it. I love it. Well, Bordeaux is the capital of the Nouvelle Aquitaine region. This is the largest region of France. As you all know, it's the largest wine producing area of France and the wine capital of the world. The most well-known wineries are located here. We go to some of the best wineries that are open to the public and some of the most expensive wines are produced here, like for example, Petrus or Chateau Margaux, for instance. This region has an oceanic climate. It's very mild, nice landscape is a relatively, relatively flat, I would say, uh, just a few slopes. And this is also where we find the sweet canelle, which is a famous sweet produced in the area. By the coast, you have the best oysters that you can find in France. And this is a back-to-back -back cruise from Bordeaux to Bordeaux. We visit three rivers, the Gironde, the Dordogne, and the Garonne. And after Paris, Bordeaux, is the French city that has the most historic monuments, like the one we are looking at the slide, right, Seth? That's that's absolutely right. I mean, Bordeaux Bordeaux is an amazing city. I mean, the, the, it it really sparked uh, the the development of the entire region, and that that's not something new. I mean, uh, people had already recognized the spe how special this area was more than twenty four hundred years ago. Uh, and Burdi Gala uh, was created in 300, around 300 BC, and it has developed, uh, as you just said, we, uh, as really being a, a place 
of art, of architecture, and that's because of the prosperity and the, the golden age of Bordeaux in the, in the, in the 18th century. Uh, this, this is really what launched uh, the, the, the city. Uh, they are, the great thing as well is that during the conflicts, there have been not too many destructions uh, because of the location of Bordeaux. Uh, and we are docked once again in the heart of this beautiful city. And we, we basically, we go around. Huh? You just mentioned the two rivers and the estuary. But of course, uh, when we talk about Bordeaux, you cannot talk, especially when it comes to wine, you cannot forget, sorry, uh, Saint-Emilion. So Saint-Emilion, uh, famous for the wine, of course, famous also for uh, a church. And you will, you will have noticed, I hope, that we, we did not talk too much about churches. Huh? Because usually, I mean, many people, when they talk about Europe, they're like a church and another church and another church. But this one, we, we kind of have to mention it because um, it, is, it is what you call a monolithic church. So basically the church is built, is carved inside the cliff. Huh? saint Emilion, the village is built like a, around an amphitheater and the church uh, is really carved inside the cliff. And we will take you there. The church is not open to the public. You need to have a guide who has the key to enter there. It's the second largest monolithic church in the world. It's the largest in Europe. Uh, the only one that is larger is in Africa, in Somalia. There's a second, a, a, a larger one than that. It is truly amazing. And when we take you uh, to, uh, to Bordeaux, so of course we can go by bus, there is a bike tour that will take you to Saint Emilio, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a bike tour that will take you there and you finish with a wine tasting. But to make sure that everybody enjoys the wine tasting, you don't even have to come back with the bikes uh, because we want to make sure that everybody comes back in one piece. So we will pick up the bikes, you have a bus picking you up, and then everybody comes back very happy always after the wine tastings to the ship. Uh, and this little place, um, Bourg, Bourg sur Gironde, um, it is, it is a very special place. We have a few like this in Europe. Um, I guess I, th this really has to do with, with Christine, with, with our owners and with their vision of, of uh, the river cruising. And I like this place, these places, these special ones like Bilshofen, for example, on the Danube. Uh, but Bourg is very special because we, we want to show you and we want you to interact with the people, with the local people. And we've developed uh, a friendship with, with this, with this uh, city of Bourg. And so they, they have a special wine festival for us only. They open their house of wines. They have local winemakers coming. And Bourg, the Côte de Bourg wines for us North American is not, is not something you probably ever heard of because it's a very small region. But if you talk to the French, they know that exactly because that's the everyday wine for the French people. No French people can buy a, a, every, every week a, a bottle of Petrus for $1,900. Nobody can do that. Whereas the, the Bourg wine, yes, that's what they will have. So they, it is something real. And that's, that's, I think, the important thing. And we get to talk, you get to talk to the winemakers. You have a little festival, music, chanson, which are the French songs, of course. Uh, and, you have, and you get to taste the wines. It, it's an absolutely amazing moment. And as it's written on the side, it is really an Amal Waterways exclusive. You won't have that with anybody else. And as I said, Sebastian, you will be part of daily, the regular daily life and not something that is staged just for you. It is really normality. It's real. You join, you know, their joy. You can dance there. You can um, taste some of little delicacies as well, uh, because with all the wine that is flowing, you definitely need something to eat there. <laughs> And, uh, and that's how we want to do it in France. We do it on the Rhine with Lahnstein, in Wilshofen, as you mentioned, along the Danube, to create these uh, friendships with different cities, ports, um, and support them, support our local partners. is very important for Amar Waterways. That's true. You know, we do not only dock at the villages and the cities. We give something back to them. And that's really appreciated by everybody. So now I would like to talk about this uh, last, let's say, land package. It's a beautiful one. It's my favorite one, I must confess. It's in Taste of Bordeaux. It's two nights in Bilbao and two nights in San Sebastian. And by the way, it's complimentary on select 2021 and 2022 sailings. Open your eyes, please. <laughs> 
<laughs> you travel to Spain's legendary Basque country, rich in culture, rich in flavor. You enjoy two nights in Bilbao, which is home to the museum you see over there in the picture, the Guggenheim Museum. And you have two nights as well in the stunning seaside resort of San Sebastian. You know that the Basque, they have their own language, which is one of the oldest one in Europe, not related with any other language in the world. So they have their own identity, their own festivals, their own food, and so on. And by the way, you know that the cliché of the French people wearing a beret comes from the Basque and not from France. This is Basque. So uh, when you are in Bilbao, you will be taken to Guernica, for example, an excursion, which was in history, if you know, bombed by Italian and German Air Force during the Spanish Civil War. Uh, you will be also taken to Pincho tasting. Pinchos are tapas. In Barcelona, they are called tapas. And in San Sebastian and Bilbao, in the Basque country, they are called pinchos. Please do not tell them tapas over there. They do not like. So when you go on the second day, you visit this beautiful bay. Look at that picture. That's Donostia, the Basque word for San Sebastian. You will do a city tour over there. Uh, you will be taking also, by night, you will have some pinchos over there, and it's something really, really worth seeing. Uh, the following day, after you finish with Bilbao and San Sebastian, it's important also to mention that you will be taken to the French Basque town of Bayonne. So you see the whole picture, not only the Basque country, Spanish side, but also the French town of Bayonne. Lisa, you continue. Sure. Wow. That, I mean, that was that was a great way to finish. I mean, basically, we could go now and have some pinchos. Uh, that yeah. would be that would be the right moment to do that. But, ladies and gentlemen, since you've been just, you stayed with us and and you've heard multiple times that we have complimentary river cruise uh, land packages, uh, take advantage of them. They won't be here for very long. They're they are here this month. So make sure that you contact. I mean, they're, they're your travel advisors. They are listening to us at the moment. So call them now or call them tomorrow morning. I mean, they will be more than happy to answer uh, and, and to book that for you. Because when you think about the value that is there, it, it, it's even mentioned on the screen. I mean, it goes up to $2,800 uh, and that's for free. So why why not taking advantage of that? I mean, you have the choice. You can do it uh, as, as uh, Mariana just mentioned in, in San Sebastian and in Bilbao. You can have the one in, in Saint Malo and also uh, in Paris at the other end for, an, for one night. Or if you do the Paris to Paris itinerary, you have the complimentary two nights in Paris. Or uh, as Mariana also mentioned, uh, the three nights in Barcelona when you finish the Essence and Burgundy of Burgundy and Provence. So that's really something that, um, I mean, nobody should miss. If you're going to take the cruise, then take the free land package with it. That's for sure. We have also other offers. Uh, and the other offers, I think they are on, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there is another slide. Uh, uh, the, the most important one being uh, our referral offer. And that's new as well, huh, Christine? Uh, this is something new uh, that we want for our guests who have been cruising with us. Let's say that you have friends who want to come, but since you talk to them and they want to come to you, you should be rewarded and they should be rewarded too. So the new guests will receive $100 of saving per state room, and you will also receive uh, uh, these $100. Uh, and of course, you will get much more details, many more details from your travel advisors. Uh, there is also a third one that is, I think, absolutely great. And we were talking about combining these cruises. That's uh, the back-to-back -back cruises. Let's say that now, I mean, post-COVID, I mean, we don't want to stay, I mean, to just stay in Europe for just one week. If we're going to get there, we'll stay for two. So why not taking two cruises? If you take two cruises, but look at that. The second one, it will give you a 10% discount. If you, and you have until the end of March. So it's not, it's not, I would not say it's to think about it. It's to think about which ones you will combine. Huh? Because you, you can even do three cruises if you want. If you want to do four, we will be creative and we will make you make four cruises. If you want to stay one month with us, and I know that we have guests because they, I've had the chance to cruise with them, who come sometimes for five weeks on board our ships. I've seen that. So, You're so uh, right. You're free You're so, so absolutely right. And I think we have some of our loyal guests here on this uh, sip and sail who have cruised with us so, so many times. And it's always wonderful to see all of you. and. 
it's the best with our referral offer to travel with your friends, with your family, so many that you haven't seen uh, during these times where we are so limited with traveling and whom we are allowed to see and where we can go. So once this is all possible again, really those are all the tools to make it happen and just enjoy a long, nice vacation together with friends and family. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yes, finally, Plus, another I offer. One more, right? Our 2023 yes. early booking rewards. There, yeah, the, but, you know, there, there are so many offers at the moment. That's why you have to, you, you basically, the only thing you need to do is you choose a cruise. And after that, you think about the, the, the booking, the rewards that you want to get for it. Huh? But yeah, early booking rewards for 2023. If you decide to go in 2023 now, Christine mentioned uh, that Portugal is already open. Uh, the French itineraries are opening next week. So if you can't wait, well, contact your travel advisor now. Talk to them and they will. this will get you, if you book now, if you reserve now, it will get you an extra 5% five five uh, on, the, on, the, on the sailing. So that's something that you don't want to miss either. That's so, so right. And I know our time is up, but we still, we, we have time for a toast, our farewell toast. And we still want to answer some of the questions and of course, select the best Valentine's message. So with this, um, I would like to raise the glass again to our farewell toast to all of you. And um, I would like to um, share a poem um, that recently was shared with me, which expresses the perfect sentiment. So I will read a piece of it here as we look forward to our future together. Today, I dared to let myself dream that the world will one day open again, that the locks will loosen, the walls will fall, the doors will fly open and reunite us all. I dared to imagine the warmth of a cuddle, a group of my friends all locked in a huddle. I felt all the heartbeats drumming with mine. I heard all the laughter. I tasted the wine. And this one was from Donna Ash Worth. And so here is to all of you. Cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers. And now I would like to lead in to our questions. And we will select, we have so many more, but we will select three here. And the first one, one second. Is, would you recommend these France itineraries for solo travelers? And I can say absolutely, river cruising is so safe. Absolutely, yes. But maybe Mariana, Sebastian, in case you want to also say what we are doing the first night on board, that everyone feels so comfortable. Absolutely. It yeah. is first. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, the first night, we invite them to the captain's table so the captain can have a drink or meal with the solo traveler if the captain needs to be driving the ship which is also possible we ourselves we have that meal with the solo traveler and we also make the solo travel uh, meet other people so we are part of that experience as well during the week as well we are going to make sure that the solo traveler is in very good hands Perfect, perfect, yeah. And we have an average of 10 to 15, sometimes even 20% solo travelers on board. And so often I see even groups of friends traveling and they love to welcome solo travelers. Friends, you know, female groups, uh, mothers, daughters, whatsoever couples. So everything is, is, is good on board. Now, another question. Can you explain which itinerary is best to visit during each season of the year? Would you like to share in? Uh, when, I think when it, when it comes to France, uh, I mean, 
France, France is, is very small compared to the United States. So when, when you look at where, where France is located, uh, you, can, you can go pretty much to any part of France uh, throughout the year uh, and, and you, you, will have, you will have a great time. And as Christine mentioned earlier, uh, it's also a good thing sometimes to visit these, these places in different seasons. And you really can. I mean, there is no, when you're in Bordeaux, I mean, Mariana was mentioning the oceanic, oceanic climate, which is pretty much the same in, in Normandy. Um, so the, the oceans are there to, to really kind of regulate the temperatures. I mean, of course, there can be sometimes, I mean, higher temperatures, but it's really, it's really a temperate climate. Uh, and it's the same thing, you know, in, uh, in, on, the, on the Rhone River, uh, you, have, you have some wind called the Mistral, and the Mistral is actually absolutely wonderful in summer because the Mistral can cool off the temperatures when it's getting warm, can cool off up to, to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's, it's really, a, a, I mean, it cooled down 20, 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it's, it's, there is really no bad season per se when you're in France. And it's not, I'm not saying that because I'm French. It's really the feedback from all our guests. And we are even introducing now uh, holiday cruises on the Rhone River on Yama Christina. And honestly, I cannot wait to go there because I love the holiday and Christmas time cruises on the Danube and the Rhine. And I know France doesn't have the same holiday markets, but there is certainly the whole flair of the Christmas season, um, the trees, um, decoration, um, the, the special desserts. There is so much romance even in the winter time. So um, there is one more question which was partly answered, but I think we should just repeat it again. What hotels do we use in Paris for our land expansions? And I know we talked about one hotel that we use, that's the Maison Astor in the heart of Paris between the Opera House and Champs-Élysées. But on other cruises, we use the Intercontinental Marceau, the Renaissance Nobel Tour Eiffel, and also the Maison Astor. So um, now I believe it is time that we would like to um, read some of the most beautiful Valentine's messages. And since it was so hard to pick one among so many beautiful messages, we thought we'd do three. We want to spread the love today. So um, the first one is um, from Gordon Skids. May the love that you share be as wonderful as my last 52 years with my husband, whom I married on Valentine's Day in Germany, 52 years ago on Valentine's Day. So congratulations, that's absolutely wonderful. And we hope that a little bit later than Valentine's Day this year, you will come back and celebrate in Germany with us. And another one that really goes to my heart, Hello, my Valentine wish is for my husband of 18 years to successfully finally beat cancer while going through the third round. I don't want sympathy for him, but encouragement because we had such a beautiful time on Amma Magna during the Christmas markets in 2019 and loved it. I would love to take him as a surprise on a NASA Ama Waterways cruise. Best Valentine ever, either way. I love your company. And this is from Robin Johnson. Thank you so, so much, Robin. Yeah. Make me cry. And we wish you and your husband all the best and look forward to welcome you soon again. And there is another one. And this is for all of us. Um, you have one lifetime, each day a time, may you share your laughter, love and joy as you sail forth in the river of life and be able to dream even more about the places you will go. And this is from Elizabeth Day. Thank you so, so much. Great. We selected those three, but I know there were so many more. And um, please keep sending us, you know, your, your Valentine's messages and 
any comments, any thoughts, how you would like us to move forward in the future. We always like to listen. And that's why we love to travel together also with our guests, with our travel advisors. We want to talk to everyone just to see how you all feel and what else we can offer you in the future to make it the most magical, memorable and enjoyable time of your life. So as such, I think our time is over. I just want to quickly announce our next SIP and SAIL event. Um, this is on Monday, the 8th of March. And this is when we are celebrating International Women's Day at 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Eastern time. And we are so much looking forward to welcoming you to our next SIP and SAIL. Um, again, thank you for sharing your passion for traveling and your creativity with us. And um, both Sebastian and Mariana, it has been so much a pleasure for me and I believe for many of our clients and travel advisors to cruise with you in all these years that you are with AMA Waterways. So we are looking forward to welcome you, our guests, our travel advisors on board our ships very soon, whenever we can start cruising again. And we look forward to travel and cruise with both of you, Mariana and Sebastian, very soon in the future. Thank you for everything. Again, cheers to all of you. A votre santé. Until yeah. next time. Bonsoir. Thank you. Bonsoir. Thank, Thank you, Christine. You. Thank you. Bye, Mariana. Salut. Bye. Bye-bye.